had taken a picture of the poem, um, basically, this is how the questions will be put on your paper one. It will be multiple choice option. So the poem is mainly about if a person's nostalgia for his home or a person's sadness in exile, reflection on his life, or a description of the person's past life. And we will go with answer A, and you can jot down whatever answer we say. If you don't agree, you can ask, all right? But we will go with letter A for this option. The next one is B. It says, why does the writer repeat the line, I shall go home throughout the poem? And it says to emphasize his love for the country or to express his wish to return home or to show his intense longing for, for his homeland or to state his dislike for where he is now. We chose to show his intense longing because by saying, I want, to, I shall go home, that don't tell you that it's, it's love. Maybe he wants to go home for any other reason. Um, maybe his mother is sick or anything like that. So it couldn't be to emphasize his love. Um, to express his wish to return home, he could have said that in one line. But when you say a longing and you describe the intense longing, then you are picking up the reason for. And very often when students see repetition, they tend to say for emphasis, and so we want to encourage you to look, what is he emphasizing here? And we look at his intense longing for going home, all right? The other one says, the poem appeals mostly, is it to the sense of sight or hearing or touching or yearning, all right? Now we hear, I hope that you are looking very carefully at the, the question. Because the question says to which, which, which sense it appeals to. Now the poem talks about his yearning to go home, but yearning is not a sense. And very, very often a word is thrown in there and students are thrown off. So you have to be careful. I heard more things than I saw. And so we chose, it was a sense of hearing. Remember, we heard, Remember that we heard um, about the forest fire. Remember we heard the water over the rocks. We heard a number of things. We heard music in the, in the square and um, all of that. So your answer would be the sense of hearing. And I'm telling you that yearning is all over the poem, but you have to remember that yearning is not a sense. For question four, our mood is described as melancholy, all right? Now, what is a speaker's main desire? Why does he want to go home? Why does he wish to come home? Is it that he wants to go visit historic sites? Is it that he wants to visit friends and family? Is it that he wants to refresh the memory of his past? No, he seemed to me, it seemed to me that his memory is very good. He didn't really need any um, desire to go home to refresh his memory, but he wants to enjoy all the experiences that he had once more. Remember that when the poem began, he kept telling us of the things that he used to do, and this is what he wants to go back and see. All right, now you have to look very carefully. So we decided that number five would be D. You have to look at the poem very carefully now to see if you see any similes, any metaphors, or any personification, all right? Any similes, any metaphor, and any personification. Now, this really needs for us to go back up. And so I'm going straight up at the poem for us to look again. Now, if you look for a simile, that has got to be introduced by your as or your like. So if you look through, there is nothing. There's no simile, all right? Um, they didn't bother to ask us about alliteration because that is, is all over the poem. But they are saying, where can we find 
Um, where can we find personification? Is there any place where he has personified um, the stream? Is he personifying the forest fire? Is he personifying the fiddle? Has he made up um, an example of personification of native life, of anything like that? All right. No, there is no example. Again, as I said to you, if you do not agree, you can let us know. You can share, all right? When I ask you some questions, I will tell you straight up sometimes when we are deliberately selling you an answer that is not right so that we are forcing you to take part. But I'm looking carefully and I don't see where he has made a person out of any humans in the human things. So where do we find the metaphors? Where do we find the metaphors? Now, at, um, at the line number two, wonder eyes. Line number three, golden noon. Uh, line number four, sapphire skies. Line number five, nothing there. Line number six, bending grass. Line number seven, no metaphor there. We have um, hyperbole. Uh, I shall return to hear the fiddle and the five of village dances. Dear delicious tunes. That's a metaphor. Hidden depth of native life. Stray melodies melodies all right that's another metaphor so what we've used there is the metaphor all right so we hurry and go back now just to make sure i think we were at a uh, question okay so is there an answer that says two only there are no similes so we have to choose an answer that does not have number one in it Is there an answer that does not have one in it? D. D says three only. And what is three? Personification. So do you know that these three devices are comparisons? Simile, metaphor, and personification are devices of comparison. So whatever it is that I announce then, let's understand that there is no answer that asks you for a metaphor alone. You have to then choose personification. Let me pause for the questions at this point. Any question? Now understand that once you're in the exam, you have 60 questions ahead of you. What you know and can deduce, you choose that very quickly. Do not leave any multiple choice questions without a choice. Make an intelligent choice. You can, by the process of elimination, cut out some things and end up where you are supposed to end up. All right? Let me move very quickly. In the poem, the memories recounted by the speaker when you look at what he's remembering, how, how are they recounted? Are the memories positive? Are they distinct? Are they vague? We would choose vivid, means very, very clear. Very, very clear. We are in no doubt about it. Very, very clear. All right? All right. I want to, ah, uh, now this is a poem that you have studied on your, on the list. You will never find this poem in the, in the paper one. They don't put any of the poems that you have in paper one at all. It therefore means that I'm going to ask you, or, and I don't even know if you are near, 
to remind yourself of the poem Orchids. This is one of those poems that speak to nature. This is one of those poems that you could put under the theme, a reluctance admiration. This is where the person, I never liked this orchid at all and starved this plant. She never interested in it and she was moving so she decided she was going to throw it out. But the poem had, the plant had this, this strength of character that it bloomed despite the adversities. And when it bloomed, the persona was frightened. She was impressed by the beauty of the plant that she says she was going to preserve it in the pages of her memory. She was going to save it up, all right? So based on what you know and what you are looking there, um, may I just have a few persons trying to just, um, nobody can give you a grade or show to you that you are wrong. I never feel bad when I'm wrong. I just simply go back and double check. I want to encourage you to do the same. Can we get somebody volunteering to tell us, number one, what is the persona doing in the poem? Anybody? Miss is the answer C. Correct. She's packing to move out. Remember the poem says that she had spent five weeks and she was now packing to move out. Thank you very much. Um, what is the expression, one who makes a ritual of giving flowers sent? What does that mean? Anybody can try number two? Anybody can try number two? Ms. D? Yeah. No. Person is giving it, just give them an orchid. She always get these things and she just give away. Have nothing to do with religion. Have nothing to do with a ritual that she's making up or so on. So D is a sensible answer. Correct. Anybody can help us with number three? <coughs> the orchids were stubborn. The personification. Very good. We normally use stubborn with people and their responses. All right. So we are considering that personification. Moving up. Oh, we skipped five. Uh, four. Can you see four? Yes, yes. My screen is in, uh, something is running along my screen. Somebody read four for me, please. What you suggested about the persona in lines 15 to 19. We have to go back to check on line 15 to 19 to answer that yes, one. Yes. Yes, All right, please. let me go back very quickly. All right, let me see if I can find it. One, two, three, four, four and four, eight. And I was six. sure there. Which one? I watered them once. I was but sure they would. I was sure. Whoa. That's 15. That's line 15 to 19. I was sure they would win. I was sure. And I would toss them out with the five week litter. They were stubborn. I starved them. They would not die. All right, can we look again? I was sure they'd wilt. And I would toss them out with the five week litter. They were stubborn. I starved them. They would not die. Let's go back to the question now. It says, what can we infer about the person? Person who never watered them, who say, you know, them would have dead. What, yes. what, um? Let's go back four. to number uh -huh. four. Oh, it's back to number four. Sorry, love. All right. Now you have to read the option for me because there's something in my way. What is A? The person is, very con is a very confident person. What is B? Is a very confident, you say? Yes, yes. All right. Um, that don't look so to me. What about B? 
she does not like the fact she only got a spray of flowers. <laughs> okay, that's that. What is the other one? She's a heartless individual. Oh my God. And what is the other one? She's not interested in preserving the flowers. All right, so what, what does it suggest about this lady? Yeah. She's not interested. She doesn't like flowers. In the flower. <laughs> it's not because it's only um. It's just the bloom she gets. She begs now and she will kill it. No, no, that's not it. So I agree with you. All right, let's go to five very quickly. So based on our actions, what do you think? And we have to look at everything that is in the poem. She's unreliable. She's not appreciative. She doesn't get attached. She owns many books. Missy. Right, she doesn't get attached. And how do we know that? Give me two pieces of evidence. How do we know that? Mr. One, because she said it will be with it, with the five weeks litter. litter. So that means- Right, because if after she lives, she stays in a place for five weeks. Um, and she go pack up and go away. It, you know, she, she doesn't get attached. She don't trouble her that she have to move. She probably pack up her things and, and, and move on to another place. And when she settled down somewhere, she will send for them. But she doesn't get attached. She doesn't get attached at all. All right. Now, what is the main contrast in the poem? The persona moved in with big dreams and moved out five weeks later. That's one. Two. There's an interesting difference between the orchid's lack of smell and the color of their petals. Then see, the, the, um, the poem highlights the orchid's resilience in the face of the persona's negligence. And then the type of occasion determines the size of the flowers somebody receives. All right. So which is a sensible and intelligent answer? Miss C. Yeah. See, right. you know, when you get into the exam, though, you know, guys, they are not going to let you off because I think these answers are fairly, um, they are easily worked out. You can see what they are asking. When you get to the real deal, they have some questions that will have you wondering whether this is that or that is that. You understand? So you have to get used to the idea. I chose this poem to put it on this because you know the poem. But can you imagine a poem that you've not met before? It is going to take you some time to work on it. All right, let me leave that one. Um, seven now. You know, I think I said this already. Pages of your memory. What device? What, what, um, how does that illustrate a device? Which one? Metaphor. Beautiful, beautiful. And number eight, what does the last line of the poem reveal about the persona's intention? You remember the last four lines? Miss A. No, baby, she doesn't plan to put them in a literal book at all. Let's see. Yeah, she's intrigued by and she plans to find out more what makes them um, so unique. I think, I think we better just go, run quickly. Um, she says that, can you, can you, oh, can you just read the last line for me? Look at this. It says the buds on Fleur that morning. I will pluck the full brown broom and press them between the pages of memory, that's not a book. Perhaps in their thin transparency. Do you know the, the writer of this poem, guys? Is Hazel Simons and Simons, you know? She's the person who edited all the poems that we are studying. If you look at CSEC poetry, her name is on the cover of the book. So when she compares the beauty of the orchid to the beauty of a poem, Guys, is one of the highest compliments she could give. So it's not in a book. That is what you would do with a poem. 
but she says she will press them between pages of memory. So she's um she's comparing her her the the capacity of her brain to the pages of a book. Understand? Yes. All right. Good, my little ones. Um, oh, oh, um, there are two questions left. It says, um, what is the tone of the poem? What is the tone of the poem? Contemplative. Contemplative. She's not bored, confused, or annoyed. She's just, because when we start out first, you know, you could say, well, she not have anywhere to go or something like that. But you begin to think, how is it that this plan? So contemplation is where it's at. You have got to read page, um, question 10 for me, please. The poem explores all of the following themes, except A, the natural environment, B, man versus nature, C, religion, B, resilience. All right. So we are going to take out religion. Resilience means, you know, that's a part of your child month um, soaring, strive to um, overcome adversities with resilience. So the, the adversity that the plant um, faced was the woman starving it, but it bounced back, that's resilience. Natural environment, this is a plant that um, is a part of nature. Um, which was the other one? Man versus nature. Man versus nature, that is clear. It's a persona versus the plant. Religion is the only one that we would have to take out. All right? Okay. Now, when we get to the prose section, we still have 20 questions and we have two different passages. All right? Um, you're expected in, in the drama section, you're expected to hear about dramatic devices. Poetry, poetic techniques. And in prose, you're looking for narrative techniques. All right, so you have to write, you have to read and write the language of literature. We have to make sure that you understand that. So in this one, ah, uh, this is basically what it is for your um for your um paper one. You can't go in the exam being prepared for paper one, um, except your knowledge of of your knowledge of drama, your knowledge of prose, your knowledge um of um of poetry. They will ask you questions on content. They will ask you question on techniques. You will be asked questions for vocabulary based on the thing that you are watching. Based on that, you will be required to answer all of those. Guys, this is um, these 60 questions. Um, these, these 60 questions. I don't, are very important, but I think what stretches you are the three S's, all right? What stretches you are the three S's. And I want to make sure that um, if you have any questions that you will look to, to um, an analysis of your questions is really what I am interested in to see how it is that you answer. Now, I have a presentation on the 20 poems that cannot be done tonight. I am trying to see um, how I can split it up because I would want to look at a little bit of the drama. I want to look, I made sure to, to do this part because everybody has to do this part. But some of you are doing The Tempest and some of you are doing Tijari's Brothers. Some of you are doing Mockingbird. Some of you are doing Breath Eyes. Some of you are doing short stories. So in all of those questions, in all of those sections, 
there are choices. I want to use the other, um, the other hour that we have. Looking basically, I am thinking that maybe my best bet would be the poetry that everybody has to do. Um, don't know, I'm not so sure um, how you will look at it, but I can take your, I am prepared for everything guys, but I would want to know what it is. So I'm gonna stop sharing now and come back to you so that you can tell me where we go from here. All right, so what I want for you now is to tell me where do we go from here? Um, the poetry, everybody does the poetry. So I'm thinking maybe that's where I should go. Your opinion, your, uh, your input. I noticed that there are some questions, some um, poetry on the themes. Very good. Yes, Deandra, I see that. Um, all right, um, Pizzera says poetry as well. Good. Um, what I wanted, what I want to know is, um, yeah, I think I better just get into it. If I have any other time um, left after I do the poems, then maybe what I can do is to take a question from you, but I have to get off. Can you send the PowerPoints to my email, please and thanks. All right, um, I'm going to ask them. Um, I'll have to ask our technical advisor how to do that. All right, so save it in the chat so that he will um, think there. I don't know, Andre, if you're nearby, can you give I'll... me some of the information that they're having in the chat? All right, Mrs. Lee, no problem. First, yes, please. please ask, First is asking about the PowerPoint. Can they get the PowerPoint? Well, um, you can tell me that, Andre. You just yes. tell me how to do that. All right. So you can email it to me. Yes. And 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 everyone else, just just put just put the email address in the chat. Those for those who want the PowerPoint, just put it in the chat, and I'll ensure you'll get it before the class before class is over, or or after class. Depends on when Mrs. Lee sent it to me. All right. Clear? All right. Good. Any other question? Let me check. All right. Okay. Let me check and see. Not seeing any other question. Just, just, was just answering while you were going through the, the questions earlier. All right. Very good. All, All right. right. Now, guys, I am going to bring up some possible questions that they can ask us on the um on the poetry, and then um I can send you an analysis of the poem as well, Andre so that they could get those as well. But um, I want to see how is it that we apply the, the, the knowledge of the, the poems. As I go through, I will also make clear some knowledge that we have on it. So while you're putting in your, doing your email, I'm going to get the other slide ready, um, the other section ready with the questions, um, with the questions for, for the poetry, all right?
Miss, we can't hear your, your muted, Miss. I, yes, Miss, I know I was muted. I was changing to pick up where we are now in terms of our poetry, all right? So um, I'd love for you to look at the possible things. Everybody is familiar with all the poems. My parents, little boy crying, once upon a time, dreaming black boy, African thunderstorm, sonnet composed on Westminster's Abbey, 1802, God's grandeur, stone's throw, a woman speaks to the man who is employed, the woman speaks to a man who's employed her son. Or our kids, Miro, Old Eig, Test Match, Theme for English B, Bird Shooting Season, Dulce et Decorum S, Dark Time, Constant Image of Your Face, West Indies, USA, and South. Those are the 20 poems. I would advise us to make sure that we are familiar with all of them. There is no question that they can send us that only has one poem. Every question, and I'm sure your teachers would have told you, every question has two poems that you must know intimately. I mark at the exam level. At that level, if you send an answer in and you only use one poem, we mark you out of, we take out 17 marks and put it aside because your total marks is really 35. You see 25 on the page, but 10, 10 marks are added for your grammar and your presentation. So if there is only one poem, you know we start marking out of 17 for you. Another thing is that if you don't choose a poem that they name, you have to come up with two poems. You must know the name of the poem and the name of the writer, the poet. You also must choose the correct poem. Because as these questions, some of these questions will show you, if you don't choose the correct poem, you can't, you might be able to answer two or three things um, based on it, but the essence of the question will be left. So as I go through these questions now, you stop me whenever you want a clearer explanation. There is no way students, that I can complete everything to everybody's satisfaction. But I want to make sure that I address all of this. Is there anybody online who has no idea about one of these poems? I'm going to take two before I get in the question. Is there a poem that somebody doesn't know anything about? Miss, most of the poems I don't know anything about. Come again, baby. Most of the poems I don't know anything about. Um, Mom, you have to send that to me personally because I have to contact you. All right? I have to contact you because you are running behind. If, if it is that you don't know about... Miss? Yeah? I'm seeing three, three that, that I didn't see. Which, which three? Um, the mirror. Mirror the is there. Speaks. Mirror is there. You have never heard about mirror? No, miss. Okay. But the rest, the rest, I have um, read them already. Mina want you only to read them, mom. They were not taught to you? Yes, miss. All right, good girl. Um, but who I was talking to before? Um, Shariki, miss. Shariki, um, put that in the chat somewhere. Oh, you have my number, Shariki. 821-1970. Get to me on WhatsApp and tell me that, and I'll try to make a contact with you. Okay, miss, much appreciated. 
Okay. Mr. Can you see your number, please? Know, we really don't know what they are going to ask us. It therefore means we have to know all of them. And if let's supposing they ask us about my parents kept me from children who were rough. And you say, yeah, man, me know that, me know that good. And then they put it with um, then they put it with theme for English B. And you say, but me don't know theme for English B. That means there's only one part of the question you can answer. And that is trouble. So that is why I'm saying that um, you are to look at the list and to look if there's anything that is new for you there. Right now, your teacher can have about five left, you know. It can have oh. about five left. Um, I would have preferred if she doesn't have five, but she could get through those. And if, if, if she teaches like me, one class can't do one poem. You have to get into a poem. All right. No, I think we've we've gotten, I think we've gotten um, our ideas about, we've gotten no ideas about um what the poem is about. I am trying. There, there is one person who I want to take care of um, because most of these are are not, she's not familiar. And so I will make some time to see how best I can. But now let's look at question one. It says, choose two poems from the prescribed list. And that is why I made sure to put the list up there. All right, so the list is up there. And this question could come from, from 1953 or 1960, well, six, six, he never did their own. Um, it's 42 years now since the is around. But my thing is that anything at all they can ask you. It says two poems that deal with um, social issue that is presented. Now in an essay, you are to describe the social issue that is present in each poem, and you are to discuss how the speaker or the title is used in presenting this issue, as well as you must identify and discuss one device that is used. Every poetry question is going to ask you about something in the poem. You must mention the theme. You must mention the question that they are asking you. But they are also going to ask you about your poetic device. We must know them. We simply must know them. I'm going to ask that you look. Um, I have a list. I have not edited it yet, but I, I think I have a list of all the poems, a summary of all the poems, and a set of devices that you can use. All right? So those who are familiar with the poems already, maybe we won't send that to you, but we want to make sure that people like um, Sharika have some things now that you have to pull through fast because it's a lot that you have to do little one okay it's a lot that you have to do now what are some social issues right away you know what is happening in america with color that is a social issue racism is a social issue gender issue is a social issue so if we are looking at gender issue we can look at the woman who speaks. We can look at a stone straw. We can look at a constant image. We can look at mirror. These are some poems that could answer that. Social issue also would look at the hypocrisy in our society. So we could look at once upon a time. We could look at social prejudice where the children were not allowed to, well, especially the child wasn't allowed to play with the others. And he was dying to be a part of this. So if you look at that poem, you would question, you would say, Lord, we can't do that one, but you must know what are the social issues, right? If you are looking in, if you are looking in um, um, on the educational status, 
racial issue is also social issue. And so you could use your theme for English B and your dreaming black boy to answer this one. I'm not so sure that test match at Sabina would be a good one to use. But social issues are also like that. If you look at Dulce et Decoromes, there's a social issue there. The poet Wilfred Owens had a problem with how young soldiers were recruited. And so he was saying that they need to do a better job and tell the young men the truth. And so his poem, he shared an issue that he had in a dream. And he said, when you tell them the truth, if they still want to serve their country, then you can tell them it's a wonderful thing to, to die for one's country. If you look at dark time, you will look at how one country is oppressing another one. So those are social issues. Those are social issues. If you look at West Indies, USA, you will look on the issue of how you're on an airplane and you can't come off, you're treated like a, a rogue. At the Puerto Rican airport, um, persons are looking on thinking that uh, Puerto Rico is supposed to be as rich as possible because Puerto Rico was promised some promotion if they backed up the USA. But history will tell you that although in the battle, Puerto Rico saved the USA by preventing a barrier for them to get in. What happened is that the USA has not treated Puerto Rico well. Puerto Rico now is like a poor cousin. It is not a state of the United States and that was what it was promised. If you look at social issues, then you can, you, if you understand that you can pull a poem, you can pull a poem and see how it is. All right, okay. So any one of those, any questions while I move on to the other um, question? Is someone asking in the chat if you could compare Dulce S. Decorum and a woman speaks to the man who has employed her son? Now, what is it that I would be looking at? What is it that I would be looking at? If I look at Dulce et Decoromes and, and I'm looking at a woman speaks, then I could look at the oppressors. I could look at the people who arrange a war as oppressors, and I could look at the soldiers as victims. I could look at the woman um, as a victim um, when you examine how this Don has taken over her son. She can't even talk to him. She's talking to somebody to tell him discrimination. All right, so you have the, the, the powerful and the powerless. So I could look at those poems in terms of that. I could look at the woman who speaks and to look at how she was sure that her son would 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 die if she lived by the if he lived by the gun. She said he would die by the gun. Now in the poem for Dulce et Decoromes, we are looking at the loss of life for young men. There's there there is no guarantee that these young men are going to make it. So I could, I really could look at it. And if you look at the persona's attitude, the same anger that is in the, the speaker persona in, in Wilfred Owens is the same anger, a determination this woman has made up her mind. She knows that if the boy continues, she knows that it don't make any sense to say anything to him. Because she said that you are like a father to him. But what kind of father would give his child hot exploding, a hot exploding gun, you know? So we are looking at a possible, we could look at where we are seeing the lives of young people being ushered out. 
All right. Is there any other um, possible ways that you think we could look at those? What I'm saying to you and your students is the fact that if you can find an area that's the same way that the examiner can put two poems together, we, we look at war poems and we put them, but it doesn't have to be about war. Some of the outstanding images that we get could be the reason um, that we share, okay? All right, if there are no more questions, I'd like to move on to the other set. It says that, um, choose two poems. I wonder if I skipped any. All right, so we did social issue. Um, let's look at two poems for dreams and desires. Dreams and desires. What two poems could we look at? The first one that is jumping out at me is Once Upon a Time, Dreaming Black Boy. There are 17 wishes in Dreaming Black Boy. That persona has stated like a chorus what I call a wish list. Now these, wish, this, these wishes that are on the list, they are dreams, aspirations, all right, so Dreaming Black Boy is one. Then I could look at, um, he wants to become educated. He wants to be treated equally. He wants to travel. He wants um, black adults not to be so nervous. All right, he wants to be like Paul Robinson. He wants to pe for people to speak to him well and not treat him as though he's an object from Mars. All of those are dreams and aspirations. All right, then we also can look at, if we look at a woman speaks her dream, I think she listed that in the first stanza. She said she raised her son and him could come, um, doctor, lawyer, whatever, healer. All of those things are dreams, her dreams, her desires for her son to come out to something good, all right? I want to let you know that if I take a bird shooting season, one of the desires of the persona and the woman um, who's speaking is the fact that when the men go bird hunting, she would prefer if these birds fly. She doesn't like the tradition. She's looking at the fact that when she ends up on the women are domesticated and that's a gender issue. They have to spend up all night cooking and packaging Cersei tea and, and tire leaf and pudding and things. They have to spend the time doing that. But she says that the children, the young ones, the girls are saying to the birds, fly, birds, fly. And that is, that speaks to us about dreams and aspirations. All right? Yes. I don't know, there is dream and aspiration in, in um, English B, but um, it's going to take you a, a good knowledge of your pen to show you how, because he really spends time saying to his professor that, you know, when you give me something to write and say that I must write out of my, of my um, write from my heart and whatever I write will be true. So he's really rebutting. We don't have too much there in terms of dreams and aspiration. Constant image of my face. We have some desires there. This is a man who has, the, he has divided loyalty. What he was doing was saying that he wished that his romantic interest would understand first. He, 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 this is what he, um, this is what he's saying in the poem, you understand? He wishes that this, this is how it would happen, all right? If you look at... Um... ...to um, alienate him, but his wishes were seriously 
to be with those boys. He said he longed to forgive them. He wished he had that opportunity. And then once upon a time examines the fact that this father is saying to his son, I wish you could tell me about my innocence. I wish I could regain the innocence that I have. I want to make sure that you understand that he went in the poem saying, um, I'm showing all this hypocrisy. And my biggest problem is the fact that I know that I am a hypocrite. And so what he wants is to be able to say that when he says, um, it's good to see you, that he really means it. When he says goodbye, that he doesn't mean happy and good riddance. All right, so these are areas that we have to make sure, we have to make sure that we can recognize, um, we can recognize dreams and aspiration. I want to let you know that Oleg, Oleg, she's so lying and terrible, but she wants to, she says that even if she changed her lifestyle, parents are not going to let her go because they have their cultural story. But if you go through, if you look at test match, um, for test match in Savannah Park, the man who came from England, his wishes was that the, the British players would win the match. So there, there are quite a few areas that you could find the answers for those. You can look, look at the desire of the persona in Brathwaite's poem, South. He's going back home. He says he noticed that there are all these problems at the North and he did benefit from the North. However, he wants to go home. So the poem is called South, where people greet him, where he has a wide open space. He says there are sand and sleet and all sorts of poor weather up North, but what he wants is to head back home. And for you, if your teachers have opened it, you know that going south could mean the West Indies or it could mean Africa, which is his original home. All right? So dreams and desires, if you look even at, even if you look at a stone's throw, you could see that woman's desire was that they wouldn't kill her. All right, she never but a quiet, you know, guys, because I, yeah, yeah, I hear you. She woman was caught in the act of adultery. She knew what the law was. She knew what the law was. So when she was caught, she just keep her head down for she knows she's guilty. My only problem is a gender issue, guys, because one person can't be caught in the act. And where is the man? The man is not shown. So that is gender bias again. You need to explore your poems, man. And you don't, you don't, what I want for you to understand is that. Don't go in the exam and you are saying, boy, I'm going to say marks about discrimination. Look, search your poems, which is why you have to know all your poems. You're not going to need four for the examiner, guys. You're going to need two that they have not named and two that they have named, but we don't know is which four. So because we don't know which four, we are going to make sure that we understand all of them. And some people will say, well, this one did come 2019 and 2020. Um, yeah, 2020, we never get any. You understand? So we want to make sure, we want to make sure that we know the poems. And there are 20 of them, 10 short stories and 20 poems. All right? 10 short stories and 20 poems. Okay? All right. I want now to, to be able to go up. Ah, any questions on that one? Any question on that one? All right, so there are no questions on that one. I want to be moving up to the other areas. All right, guys, you know that I can't know what you know. I know a lot and I know all of them, but you have to ask so that I can answer um what your needs are i know that the chat i see the chat blowing up 
So what I'll do is that I'll pause to take the questions on the chat. But if you look at the time, you will also know that we're really running against time. All right. Um, and this one I think you are very comfortable with, childhood experience. Childhood experiences is a theme that can be found in poems. Identify one childhood experience um, for one persona and show us a device from each poem. Discuss the way in which the persona is affected by this particular experience as a child. All right, what are the poems? Can I hear from you? What are the points? Emma. Emma is a short story, my baby. Miss my parents. My parents, very good. Next one. Miss little boy crying. Little boy crying, beautiful. Next one. This bird shooting season. Bird shooting season, yes. What about once upon a time? Miss Anna, um, this is a dark time, my love. This is a dark time, my love. We, we don't have any children in that one, my baby. Miss. Martin Carter was an adult. And actually, Martin Carter was a, a political activist. Miss Dreaming Black Boy. Dreaming Black Boy, we can treat him as a child because he says himself as a boy, yes. You can use Miss Team for English, English B. And basically, that is it. Basically, that is it. We have children in, in Thunderstorm, but they are not the main idea. They are running around while the adults are fretting, but they have no idea how serious thunderstorm um, would be. It's just a lot of excitement um, for you. If you're in your house and you have all your food and your, everything is happening and a hurricane is coming, your house lock up and dry, you don't worry. Your parents must worry, you're a child, you don't have to worry. So we do have um, once upon a time, little boy crying, my parents kept me from children who were rough, dreaming black boy. We have four poems that we could use. All right, if I'm leaving anything out, you can let me know. And they are asking us, what are some experiences? Now, you know, guys, I would pick up um, little boy crying for that one. I would, um, my childhood experience um, is the, is for how the child is affected by a particular experience. And I would speak to the fact that he got flogging and he got a flogging and he started to cry, but he started to cry because he wants to manipulate his parents. All he wants to do is to make them, I'm sorry that them didn't beat him. How can I beat him get two slaps? He got two slaps. All right, but he's holding and twisting up his face and carrying on. He wants for the father to pick him up and say, hush. But the poem tells us that the father said, it's never good. You don't interfere with a lesson once you are going to teach it. And he was hurting too. The father was hurting, but he had to keep a straight face. He had to make sure that um, he didn't ruin the lesson that he was going, that he was teaching his child. And then, you know, we have literary allusion where the child refers to him as a monster um, uh, from Jack and the Beanstalk, that story. He wish he could chop down the beanstalk and make him father dread. And that for you would have shown you how the child saw his father because of the, because of the, um, the punishment that he, he was to be given. If you look at Dreaming Black Boy, his experience is in the first two, the first two lines of the poem. He wishes teacher would recognize him. He wished they would give him a hug. He scored the goal, but nobody's paying any mind. He wished that he wasn't invisible to his class. So those are particular experiences that he wanted to be changed. 
And repetition is a good, good device that is in there because they keep repeating the phrase, I wish and I wish, all right? Any questions on that one? Or it doesn't have to be a question. Any contribution on that part? Did Miss, you you were, uh? were supposed to um, compare childhood experiences, which two points would you choose and why? Now, if I'm going to come, I can choose any of the four that we named. So I could choose the little boy crying and I could use uh, my parents kept me from children who were rough. So in both cases, I would, I would, the children would have a complaint. In both cases, I would see the little boy um, blaming his father for slapping him without seeing the underlying lesson. I would also see the same thing with, I would also see the same thing with um, my parents kept me from the parents' point of view. They were sure that they were um, protecting their son but he did not enjoy the exercise at all. The children mocked and teased him because from what they were seeing, he was behaving like a snob. They wouldn't understand that it's his parents who, are, um, who prevented him from being a part of it. They would not understand that. What they saw was that he was maybe a middle-class child who have a lisp and scorning them. So they, they teased him when they could. They made him suffer when they could because as far as they are concerned, as far as they're concerned, it was, it was they who started it. They were showing off, all right? So I would, I would use those two. I could use any one of them at all. I could use any one of them because if I could use Dreaming Black Boy and I could use um, um, Once Upon a Time, because remember that there is a verse in Dreaming Black Boy where he said he would wish that others were not afraid of them. All right, because he saw how racism impacted even the adults. And so what happened is that he was now saying, um, like the child in Once Upon a Time, his father had turned to him and saying he was seeking a way where the son could inform him, um, um, could teach him about the, the, um, the innocence. If his son could bring him to the place where he was at one time, and he appeals to the son because he says he recognizes that he's a part of the adult hypocrisy. Are you understanding, guys? Yes, ma'am. Oh, very good. Very good. Anything else? All right, I'm going to go along those same veins, but the next question that comes up asks me about racism. All right? And uh, for racism, you can use Sabina. You can use Dreaming Black Boy. You can use theme for English B, any one of those. And it says you show the manner in which pers um, racism affects the persona's life. Now, we just went through Dreaming Black Boy. So you know that racism made him seem invisible. You made him seem as though he had no future. He was treated less than a human being, but he was determined because there were a few people who from the black race had shown that there was a room for growth. The possibility was that they could shine. But a test match now, if we look at racism and how it affects this man, this man is coming from England. Sabina Park is just one like a school backyard as far as I'm concerned. In England, they have lords. Their stadium is huge, all right? Millions of dollars. And people go there, not only for an event, but as a mark of status as well. So when he comes in and then guys, it's before your time because West Indies used to be a, 
um, uh, a challenge for India and, and, and um, England. They never played a match that they lost. It's just in recent time that the West Indies team is not living up to their expectation. So when he came to Jamaica, he wanted to see, he wanted to see where they came from and how is it that they prepared themselves so that they could beat up everybody. When he walked into um, Sabina Park, he looked around with scorn. He was strutting, man. He was proud of no say anybody will come from this little place say, can and beat we up. Uh-oh. But when the match started, when the match started, understand that the Jamaicans turn over on him and says, man, you should have begged one of our West Indian men to play for, you know?